Is this not obvious? I don't know. Clearly it's not obvious because it was a question. <laughs> channel you are now hanging out with America's favorite veterinarian I am Dr. Katrina King so one of the things I thought I'd do is just jump on here every now and then and answer some questions casually that don't necessarily require a veterinarian or someone with a doctorate degree to respond to but you know some more ethical issues that you know involve some shades of gray areas that you know, there really isn't a right or a wrong answer. Um, but, you know, maybe I could lend some of my professional expertise to help clarify how some choices in these particular instances might be more right or more wrong. And, um, you know, I was just playing in my makeup and I saw this question come across my desk and I figured it'd be a good opportunity to jump on here and get started with answering those kinds of questions. And so, this particular um, question was one that came up on Quora and it has thousands of answers and upvotes. And the question is, if someone puts a kitten outside to be an outdoor cat, do you have the right to take it home to protect it? Now, there are tons of answers on Quora about legal issues, health issues for the kitten, health risk for the potential pet parent, and other animals that that pet parent might be exposing this new kitten to. Um, and all of those are important and are of concern. But first and foremost, I think it's important to note that if you see a kitten outside, um, that, that in no way gives you the right to collect that cat <laughs> and decide that you're gonna be its pet parent. There actually are people who own pets, who take care of pets that you know, choose to allow their pets to live most of their lives outdoors. And there are a variety of reasons that, you know, that particular scenario can exist. A good example might be a cat that was already living outside and somebody just took on the responsibility of feeding it and getting it vaccinated and making sure it's healthy on a regular basis. Not necessarily right or best for you to try to take that pet into your home and assume that pet as your own. I'm chuckling a little bit because I don't even believe that I have to say this right now. Because an animal is outside and doesn't especially appear to belong to anybody, doesn't just make it okay for you to just scoop that animal up and claim possession over it. Now, I do think that a pet that's outside and cold and hungry, it's a great thing you can do as a human being to offer that pet some food and some warmth in your home, for example. But I really think it's important to note that you have a responsibility to see if this pet actually is owned by an individual, maybe there's someone who lost their cat and they've been desperately searching for him. And you'll never know that if you just take the cat into your home and claim him as your own and never ever attempt to search for the pet's owners. It's worth noting that a lot of jurisdictions actually have in their laws rules that require you to actually, you know, actively search for a pet's parent or the owner of a said pet if you do find them. You just can't pick up a pet and claim them as your own because they were outside and they didn't have a collar. I mean, maybe he did have a collar and his collar fell off or maybe he did have a tag and his tag is no longer with him or maybe his owner is sick or maybe he's lost. You never know. So we just can't make assumptions about pets that we see outside and you know, claim them as our own just because they appear to be homeless at that moment. This is especially true for cats because a lot of times people allow their cats to go in and out of the house on a regular basis. I mean, they make kitty doors for a reason, right? And so while you may think that it's not in the cat's best interest to be outdoors, and while in your mind you might think that cats do better living in a household, you have to understand that not everybody always thinks the same way that you do. 
and they could be giving their pet a really good home despite the fact that they allow their pet to go inside and outside and they could be giving that pet a really good life despite the fact that they allow the pet to go indoors and outdoors on a regular basis. Now cats that go outdoors on a regular basis do worry me a little bit because they tend to terrorize the neighborhood wildlife like the possums and the squirrels and the woodchucks that are in the area. Cats are actually pretty predatory. So if they're going outside on a regular basis, you should expect them to try to capture animals and they may actually harm those animals. And you know, there could be some instances where the cat is kind of playing, but their playfulness goes too far and it brings on a fatality. And that would not be completely unexpected for a cat who spends a good amount of time outdoors. And so I would prefer that cats actually stay in the house, but I do realize that there are people who've got cats that, you know, stay indoors for the most part, but then go outside on a regular basis. I have family members who let their cats out on a regular basis. So it's important to not be presumptive. If you, if you see a cat outside and just assume that, oh, he's outside, no one cares for this cat, no one loves this cat, let me take him into my home. You can't do that. And like I said, there are states, most jurisdictions have laws that say that if you do find a pet and you intend to keep them as your own, you have to actually actively look for the pet's owner before you can just claim them as your own property. Also, it's gonna be pretty awkward if you find a pet outside and claim him as your own, especially if you continue to live in the same neighborhood because chances are your neighbor is gonna see you with their pet at some point. So true story, um, we had a dog when I was a kid who got out of the backyard and somebody found him and we didn't see the dog for months to probably at least a year. And one day a random person's walking down the street with the dog and my mom walks up and she's like, that's my dog. And the random neighbor was like, well, how do you know this is your dog? I found this dog. And in that case, the dog did have an injury. He had an ear that was bent because he was injured as a puppy. And my mom was able to say, well, I know why his ear is bent that way. He was injured when he was a puppy. Give me my dog back. But a lot of times um, we don't actually have that kind of good luck when it comes to um, identifying our pets if they've been taken by another individual. If you're worried about losing your pet, you can microchip them. It's a tiny transponder that's implanted just beneath the skin um, between the shoulder blades. And that, you know, can be read by a microchip reader and will identify you as the pet owner. Um, and so that's something that you can do if you're interested in sort of, you know, marking your pet or finding some way to permanently identify them. But if someone hasn't microchipped their pet, that still doesn't make it right for someone else to just come along and grab the pet and claim that pet as their own. Is this not obvious? I don't know. Clearly it's not obvious because it was a question. <laughs> a lot of the responses to this particular question involve the individual um, looking around to make sure there are no wanted or missing posters for this particular pet. And if they, if you don't see that, then people are sort of justifying and saying, well, if there are no missing posters or no wanted ads that have been placed, then the pet's yours. Congratulations. Um, again, I, that's not necessarily true because the cat could just be out for a stroll. It could be one of those cats who spends, you know, 20 hours a day in the house and goes outside for three or four hours at a time. And there's no way for you to know that if you just spot the kitten in the parking lot. You can't just scoop them up, put them in your car and take them home. The other thing you should know for cats especially is that um, if you have other pets in the home, those pets can actually bring diseases to your pets. And so even if you do find a pet and identify them as a potential future pet for you, it really is in your best interest and the best interest of the other pets in your household to have that pet examined by a veterinarian as soon as possible. And until you can have them examined and tested and make sure they're not carrying any communicable diseases, I would suggest that you keep that pet isolated from other pets in the household. And don't forget to actually look for the pet's owner. Do not just assume that because a pet is outside that it doesn't belong to anybody. If you got any value out of this video, then please smash that like button and consider subscribing for future content. I am Dr. Katrina King, America's favorite veterinarian. I look forward to chatting with you again real soon. Bye.